Part Three. Directions. You will hear some conversations between two people. For each conversation, you will be asked to answer three questions about what the speakers say. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The conversations are not printed in your answer book and will be spoken only once. Now let us begin with question number forty-one. Questions forty-one through forty-three refer to the following conversation. You've heard, I suppose, that the new owners have decided to make forty people redundant. Yes, I suppose we just can't compete with a flood of cheap foreign imports anymore. I suppose it's only a matter of time before the whole factory closes. Well, let's face it. The salaries here are much higher than those in Malaysia, and high salaries mean high production costs and low or no profits. Question forty-one: What has been announced? Question forty-two: What does the woman expect to happen to the factory? Question forty-three: What is the cause of the changes? Questions forty-four through forty-six. Refer to the following conversation. In my opinion, wine tasting is all about getting drunk. If I liked wine at all, I'd probably do it myself. Actually, it's a very difficult profession. You have to take an exam to be certified. The exam comprises four blind taste tests of various wines and tests on the theory of wine making and wine making as a business. They sound straightforward to me. Maybe they do, but there's only a seven percent pass rate for the exam, and only two hundred and fifty people in the world have passed it. I had to sit it five times before I passed. So, however easy it seems to you, let me tell you, it's not. Question forty-four: What does the man think of wine tasting as a job? Question forty-five: What does the wine tasting exam involve? Question forty-six: How many times has the woman taken the exam? Questions forty-seven through forty-nine refer to the following conversation. Here is an ad in the Chicago Chronicle. You might be interested in Jerry. A TV station is looking for a marketing sales manager responsible for creating and supervising promotions and sponsorships. That sounds very promising. What experience do they want? A minimum of three years in marketing or sales promotion in a TV or radio company, preferably in Los Angeles. And I have five years in that business, although it was all in New York. Question forty-seven: What sort of company placed the advertisement? Question forty-eight: Where has the man worked before? Question forty-nine: What relevant experience does the man have? Questions fifty through fifty-two refer to the following conversation. So, what does the law say on this matter? It says that only the copyright owner may make copies of the music, and that includes parts of the original song as well as the whole. 
So in this case, the blue bands taking a Beatles guitar riff and using it in their new single is an infringement of copyright. Yes. However, it's not clear exactly how similar something has to be to the original to count as copying it. The law says the similarity needs to be substantial and material, and whether this is the case with the blue band song can only be decided here in the courtroom. So we've come here today to argue that the songs are not similar enough. Question 50. What have the blue band done? Question 51. What is uncertain about the blue band's song? Question 52. Where does the conversation take place? Questions 53 through 55 refer to the following conversation. Four fire engines arrived at the swimming pool, but I didn't see a fire. No, apparently it was a chlorine leak. Fortunately, at the time of the leak, the pool hadn't opened up, so nobody was hurt. But chlorine's not flammable, is it? No, it's poisonous. The firefighters dressed up in chemical protection suits and simply diluted the chlorine. And then they started searching for the exact location of the leak. Question 53. What happened at the swimming pool? Question 54. When did the incident happen? Question 55. What did the firefighters do at the swimming pool? Questions 56 through 58 refer to the following conversation. So, assuming that the trains aren't running, how are you going to get into work tomorrow? I don't think I can. I have an hour's commute in the train, and doing that on congested snowy roads is not going to be possible. I was thinking of using my bicycle. It's quicker than walking. It's been a couple of years since I last rode it, but it should be fine. Rather you than me. The conditions will make cycling very treacherous. Question 56. What is the problem with the trains? Question 57. How will the woman get to work? Question 58. How will the man go to work? Questions 59 through 61 refer to the following conversation. We received the order for the overalls, but there is a problem. Instead of being green as we ordered, they are blue. I see. What about quantity and sizes? Are they correct? Yes, completely. So it's probable that we just made a mistake when processing the order, rather than sending you the wrong order. Okay. All I need you to do is tell me what the correct color code is, and I'll send them out to arrive tomorrow, and we'll collect the incorrect order at the same time. Question 59. What is the problem with the delivery? Question 60. What does the woman have to do? Question 61. What will happen tomorrow? Questions 62 through 64 refer to the following conversation. 
I've received a huge offer for my house from Foxtrot Development. I think it's about double its market value. They want to buy it so they can pull it down and put up a shopping centre in its place. That sounds like wonderful news, as you've been wanting to move from there for ages. Yes, it's very run down. But now that money is actually on the table, I'm getting cold feet. After all, I was born and raised there. Well, if I were you, I would grab this opportunity with both hands. You should be able to buy a nicer home in a better neighbourhood with the money, I should imagine. Question 62. What does the woman say about her house? Question 63. What does the woman say about where she lives? Question 64. What does the man think the woman should do? Questions 65 through 67 refer to the following conversation. Are you going to the grand opening of the Gaia Gallery downtown on Thursday? There's a lot of excitement in the local media about it. The building is architecturally really impressive and they're proposing to showcase environmentally oriented painting and photography. Well, it certainly seems to be exactly my scene. And I'm not busy on Thursday, but I haven't received an invite. That's no problem. My invite is for two, so you can come along with me. It starts at seven. Maybe I could pick you up? No, I'll go straight from work and meet you at the gallery entrance. Question 65. What kind of things will be featured at the Gaia Gallery? Question 66. What problem does the woman have? Question 67. What are they going to do? Questions 68 through 70 refer to the following conversation. You're not working today, Liz? I was laid off. I always work very hard, but what can you do? The boss said that because of the smoking ban, nobody wants to eat pizza in an indoors restaurant. I didn't realise the ban would have such a big effect on custom. It hasn't. Customer numbers always drop off in autumn. It's just his excuse to get rid of staff for the winter months. Last year it was the exchange rate. Next year it'll be the price of pizza bread or something. I'm sure he'll want me back in the spring, but in the meantime I'll try to find another job. And if I get one, I certainly won't work for him again. Question 68. Why has Liz lost her job? Question 69. What excuse did the boss give for the redundancies last year? Question 70. What does Liz hope to do?